A few days ago, I paid a visit to one of my regular trail running routes. Except this time, of course, I wasn't there to murder my legs running up hills. I was there to take a calm, nighttime foray to see what sorts of animals emerge under the cover of darkness. The setting of the sun is a transformative event for any wilderness. Even the most nondescript of forests and scrublands, ones you can walk through all day long without beholding much more than mere snatches of birdsong or perhaps the occasional rustle of a small lizard roused by your approaching footsteps, come alive at night. This particular venture was a little rushed, not least because I was holding something in on the way to the summit, but there were nevertheless plenty of opportunities to film some of the fascinating creatures that were out and about. The first encounter of the night was none too remarkable, a small polydesmid millipede, possibly from the genus Heterocladosoma, but that's just a tentative guess. These are a common sight around the area both by day and by night, and seem to dwell almost exclusively on tree trunks. Meandering through the leaf litter nearby, a Methana marginalis, a native Australian cockroach species, I usually find sheltering under loose bark. It also follows the usual trend of our native cockroaches, being a rather more palatable sight than their introduced relatives. This bizarre insect hunting amongst the foliage is Pristhesanchus plagipennis, a large assassin bug that can be frequently encountered both in the bush and suburbs, even in the inner city area. Prowling over the broad, fleshy leaves of a Parsonsia stramonia vine, a member of the insect family that starred in my previous upload, the Grylacridae, or raspy crickets, not actually crickets. Though dwarfed by its ferocious relatives further north, this smaller species is still a capable predator, as evidenced by the fearsome grappling spines on its front four legs. As the trail continued on its path to the summit, a route so familiar that even under the cover of darkness, no twist, turn, nor hill came unexpected. The light from my torch suddenly illuminated a small, glistening blob perched upon a railing. Triboniophorus graphi, the red triangle slug. I saw two of these strange mollusks on this particular venture, both of which were juveniles. As they grow, the dark lines running along their body will fade out, and the faint red triangle will become increasingly bold. On the rock faces and embankments that ran parallel to much of the track, hunters lay in wait. A minuscule, fleeting, but piercingly bright sparkle of light, like a castaway star from the sky above, betrayed the presence of a huntsman spider, its eyes reflecting the light from my torch, a surefire way to spot these spiders in the dark, regardless of how well camouflaged they may be. These are Heteropoda jugulans, an extremely common huntsman species around Brisbane. They are highly versatile, and in more developed areas, particularly the inner city, the species is pretty much the only huntsman I ever encounter. They may sit motionless like this for hours on end, waiting for an unwary victim to stray within reach upon which it is seized with blinding speed. Sitting atop this railing is a juvenile Isopeda species. To my knowledge, there are two Isopeda species that can be found in this area. Isopeda vasta and Isopeda queenslandensis. As juveniles, they both look extremely similar, though with that said, there appears to be a couple visible features that suggest this little spider is Isopeda queenslandensis. The chelicerae or mouthparts are visibly hairy, while those of Isopeda vasta are almost entirely glabrous. 
Furthermore, Isopea devasta possesses black bands on the underside of its legs, which are absent in this individual. Further from the ground, on the trunks of the eucalyptus trees that dominate the landscape, larger huntsmen like Holconia imanus, a strikingly patterned species that can reach 15 centimetres across, are also on the hunt. During the day, these immense spiders shelter beneath the loose bark of the trees they inhabit, a behaviour for which their flattened bodies are highly conducive. Huntsmen are all very well, and I doubt they'll ever cease to be an absolute treat to find. But among the long, dried blades of the grasses that adorned the verges of the track, spiders far more elusive and enigmatic were springing into activity. This lanky, twig-like fellow, a bit rich coming from me, I'll grant, is Asianopis subrufa, a species of net-casting spider from the family Dinopidae. These spiders utilise what is, to me, one of the most fascinating hunting techniques in the animal kingdom. One that revolves around the strange rectangle of fuzzy white silk held between the spider's front legs. The fuzzy silk that makes up this curious construction is known as cribellet silk. Unlike the glue-coated ecribellet silk utilised for prey capture by many other spiders such as orb weavers, cribellet silk is mechanically sticky meaning that the structure of the silk itself is what causes prey to become entrapped, as opposed to any sort of adhesive coating. Asianopis, when poised to hunt, faces downwards, the cribellate rectangle held below it. Should a suitable prey item wander within range, the spider will cast the silken shroud upon its victim with incredible speed, instantaneously entangling the target and neutralising any defences it may possess. Though best known for its hunting behaviour, another very noteworthy feature of Asianopis and some of its relatives are the greatly enlarged posterior median eyes. These are, in fact, the largest non-compound eyes of any arthropod and are approximately 2,000 times as sensitive to light as human photoreceptors, a vital asset for a nighttime hunter using vision to detect its prey. So that's it for this video. A little shorter than I would have liked, but I still got the chance to showcase some fascinating animals. Plus, a little more footage of net casting spiders won't go amiss for when I eventually cover them in the Spider Guide series. If you want to see what I found the last time I walked this track at night, feel free to check out this video here, or take a look at this playlist of all my outdoor adventures. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my content. Thank you all very much for watching, I shall see you again in the not so distant future.